Welcome back, everybody, to the DanJohnUniversity.com podcast. This is episode number 89. That's a big deal in my life. It's a Fibonacci number and my old high school football number. So love those Fibonacci numbers. Uh, if you're wanting to support our great podcast, we have an account over at Patreon. Coach Dan John is our little name. Or if you want everything, go to Dan John University and you'll find everything you need there. Thank you. Let's get started. We have a question from Nathan, and Nathan says, I am six weeks into the 40-day challenge, and I've been seeing good results. My question is about what comes after the 40 days. Day 41. A little humor. I was hoping to cut down to three days a week in the gym and add some focus on leg strength. I'm six months past my third knee surgery. Nathan, you got to take care of that. I ran across your explanation of the squat routine that you lay out in easy strength, which is probably a bit too technical for me, but shares my goal of building explosive strength that will allow me to keep playing sports for as long as possible. Do you have any recommendations for how to stay, uh, for how to shape my post 40 day routine, particularly reps and set ranges for squat routines? You know, Nathan, this is one of those times where it, it really, you need to tell me what you want. If you want explosive strength, you know, there's all kinds of things you can do, but with that history of knee surgeries, uh, I got to just sit back and, you know, wave my hands a little bit and say, hold on, slow down. Well, what kind of knee surgeries were these caused by car accidents, by sports, by DNA? I mean, whatever it is, I'd like to know a little bit more. Um, what most people do after the basically eight weeks of, of the uh, easy strength programs is they try to find something that, you know, excites them and, uh, I've gone into Olympic lifting programs after that, you know, competed. Uh, I'll slide over to, you know, just about any program you'll find at the university. Honestly, Nathan, probably the best thing for you to do right now is uh, go to danjohnuniversity.com and then, you know, plug in your equipment, plug in a few things, and then just see what comes up on the three-day-a-week uh, programs because basically if you're hinge, hinging and you're squatting and you're doing loaded carries, you're doing what you need to do to take care of your legs. Um, I need more information about a few things to help you more. But honestly, remember, I mean, if you're doing the deadlift family and you're doing a, something from the squat family and you're doing farmer walks, you're taking care of your legs uh, and you're going to be fine. Um, yeah, I grew up in that time where squats were the answer to every question and something else was too. But, you know, you, you probably aren't going to do very well on a, a squat dominant program with your history of knee issues. That's, that's my experience. I could be wrong, but I'd like you to think about that before you proceed uh, too far. Thank you. We have a question from Anthony. I'm interested in your thoughts on heavy stiff leg deadlifts. Is there a time and place for training the stiff leg deadlift and Romanian deadlift in the six to ten range. Oh yeah, I, I when I worked with bigger, faster, stronger, that the that straight leg, stiff leg deadlift was uh, one of our one of our big lifts for mobility and flexibility. Now, uh, one of the things I picked up pretty quickly, and this is when the RDL was showing up too, and I did meet Nico Vlad, and he is the Romanian. He is the guy in charge of the uh, Romanian deadlift. It's, he came up with it. I was there. Um, is that when you do Romanian deadlifts, you work your hamstring flexibility the way it should be done versus doing the uh, straight leg, stiff leg deadlift, which basically you turn your lower back off. Uh, I do know that a lot of the high intensity guys like the straight leg, stiff leg deadlift uh, for lower back and uh, hypertrophy. But I think we've got a better toolkit now with the hip thrust, Bulgarian goat bag swing, the rack deadlift, those kinds of things. Um, and I, I love the Romanian deadlift. Yeah, I'm a big fan of higher reps in the RDL. Uh, I do the Romanian deadlift every single day as part of my warm-up sequence. And I think it's, it's a great way to get the hinge done correctly. And it's also a great way to loosen those hamstrings. It's strange I say that because my hamstrings as I'm speaking right now, are very tight. And it's because I'm doing the, uh, this Olympic lifting program. And so I'm doing a lot of work on those hammies. 
And I'm, I think I'm staying ahead of everything by doing the Romanian deadlift. Yeah, I think uh, if you're a, an athlete of any kind in the deep off-season, high rep RDLs and maybe high rep straight leg, stiff leg deadlifts have great value. Uh, of course, as you get closer and closer to the season, uh, you're going to have to think that through. I think Romanian deadlifts are appropriate for every program done correctly, <laughs> done correctly, uh, anytime, anywhere. Uh, one last time, done correctly. I hope that helps. Thanks. We have a question from Scott. Scott's a big kid. He says, I'm a 30 year old male, six foot five and about 240 pounds, 110 kilos, and played college basketball for five years. I now play more recreationally, but my passion is really vertical jump. I started, uh, I recently started Easy Strength and I'm loving it, but was wondering what are your thoughts on vertical jump training would be? Well, the downside of training the vertical jump uh, is that, uh, well, that there is no downside, but uh, from talking with Stu McGill, he pointed out the importance of ankle stiffness for a good vertical jump. And he talked about how, you know, you, you need to have a certain physique for an outstanding vertical jump. And uh, the, the, the conversation gets much deeper. Uh, I bought that volleyball magazine years ago that had increase your vertical jump, and I bought it because it said increase your vertical jump, and I want to see what they did. Uh, when I read over the article and I looked what they were recommending, uh, I didn't see anything except 20 at the time, probably 20 or 30-year-old bad advice in plyometrics and weightlifting. Um, and now that article is probably more like 30 or 50 years old. Um, but this idea of doing things like plyometrics and all kinds of jumping exercise in the weight room, uh, the best jumpers in the world don't do them. The best jumpers jump. Uh, jumpers jump. You know, runners run, throwers throw. Um, for your vertical jump, uh, I'd like to know what your baseline is. I'd like to know where you are. Uh, from what I've seen, um, you know, I don't know what your body mass is, but if you're 240 and you're 3% uh, body fat, then that's one conversation. If you're 240 and you're 25% body fat, that's another conversation. Uh, I think the easiest way to increase vertical jump is to lean out. Uh, certainly having, you know, you know, if, if you talk to Stu, the tight, the tight um, ankle, uh, the stiff, the stiff hamstring helps a lot too, he told me. Uh, those are things he's noted over and over. So you're going to find yourself in a, in, in a strange uh, world when you, you try to improve your vertical jump. My best advice is first deal with your lean body mass. You know, more lean body mass, less fat, which is, of course, the holy grail of what I do. Uh, from there, you got to jump. You got to jump a lot. Uh, you're a sport that emphasizes it. Uh, every time you do a layup, I would try to hang a little bit longer up there. Um, can we improve the vertical jump in the weight room? Sure. I mean, there's some exercises I think would carry over well. Rack deadlift, Romanian deadlift, the Olympic lifts. Uh, anything that involves that, that explosive hinge would help. Uh, if you do have that other kind of body type, the more quad kind of jumper, uh, what uh, Stu told me was the uh, more the Eastern European style, then maybe you would get a lot of squats from squats and front squats. Um, so it's going to be an experiment of one. So I would say, let's do this. First, get me a base. How, what's your vertical jump today? What's your lean body mass at? And then let's talk from there. So let me know. And let's get started. We have a question from Stephen. You mentioned on an episode with Pat Flynn that you were able to correct your duck feet issues with ankle weights. You read a lot into it, but yes. Could you explain on how and why that works? I don't know how it worked. How long each day do you wear them? Is there anything else you would recommend to help with this issue? So, Stephen, you have to understand first, and, and you, you summarized a long point into a sentence. So, I have... Uh, two titanium hips. I was born with a condition called pistol grip hips. 